Hello and welcome, everybody. B-Movie Maniacs, is that how we do it? Haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, we're here, me and Jason Holes are here. Uh, hi, Jason. Hello, Michael. Uh, we're here to do another tier list video of alien stuff, because Romulus just came out. And uh, I don't know, Jay, you, uh, you like this franchise, right? Yeah, I'm a big fan of the franchise. Um, aliens is probably one of my top three favorite movies of all time. Very nice. I, I also like the franchise quite a bit, though that wouldn't be obvious because I think I've seen three of the movies. <laughs> oh. I've only seen Alien, Aliens, and Prometheus. Is that it? Oh. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm bad. I'm a bad boy. Oh, we will have some stuff to talk about then here. Yes, and you're going to have to make sure I'm not mispronouncing anything or doing That's anything fine. wrong. Because we aren't just talking about each movie. We're going to uh, tier list and rank all of the creatures within the Alien franchise. So it's a See, little my different. My only fear about doing this is that um, I'm going to put all the creatures like really high. Yeah. And if you got to move something later because you realize that, you know, the, the, the that Deacon is cooler than a runner and you got to swap around, I can move stuff around. Don't worry. Got it. Okay. 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 All right. Should we just jump into this? Yes. All right. Let's jump right in. <laughs> all right. Uh, first up in 1979, the film that started it all, Alien. Yeah. I mean, I just watched this one again the other day and... Well, preparing for this video mm -hmm. and i think i even got a deeper appreciation for it because I, I was trying to imagine what it would be like to watch this movie without having any knowledge of the rest of the franchise that didn't exist at the time mm -hmm. and just like this the sense of wonder i think in alien is remarkable like I, I, mm -hmm. the vibe is is amazing um, which I guess is why it's a classic and spawned all these other movies. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's got the tagline. That's one of the best taglines of all time in space. No one can hear you scream. Um, it, it really did start it all. So I, I'm, I've got to put it at the top, like alien tier. Yeah. Xenomorph tier. Xenomorph tier. Definitely. That I makes mean, sense. It's fantastic. I mean, it truly is. I, I think I saw aliens first. But it's such, it's a wholly new thing on its own, right? Like that was mm -hmm. one of the reasons it's so interesting also is that it's the first of the franchise and it's a wholly new franchise. It's got a, it's got this, you know, Geiger aesthetic to it. And it's just a horror film that is terrifying because it's, just, I mean, they're, they don't know what's happening. You know, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it just, the exploration and I'm a sucker for space horror. And so, I mean, this just really gets me. So, I, I, yes, into it. Well, you know, you know what else might get you, Jay? What? The Ovomorph. Oh. It's the first thing that gets like them. A, it looks like a like a turkey gone wrong it's at not Thanksgiving. A, it's not a great picture. A better picture would be just the... <laughs> Just, just the image, <laughs> just that. <laughs> but, but that isn't what I mean. I don't know, man. <laughs> um, yeah, the egg. I mean, as a those concept, are terrifying. Right? Right? It's like like you come up, you come upon that thing, and it opens yeah. up, and and that's where it all begins. One of the other really interesting things about the Alien franchise is it's all about the life cycle of single species. Right. Like as we go through these movies, it's all about the different parts of the, 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 the growth cycle, the metamorphosis of this creature and how every single one of them is violent and terrifying. Right. Mm -hmm. Like the ovomorph is the it, it, it gestates and then releases the next the next part of the life cycle, the face hugger. Why do we need, we know there's no spoilers that need to be had. The face hugger comes out of there and then the face hugger buries itself into the human, you know, or it's, it's 
whatever its victim and within there it plants <laughs> eggs or whatever into it right and then the chest yeah. buster happens and then the chest buster once it busts out becomes you know the the drone uh you know xenomorph like it's all within that life cycle and that gets repeated over and over to different and varying styles and levels of gore throughout the franchise yes and it's interesting because it it's it allows for some unique design across the different films and books and comics just yeah. because when the maybe this is a for the face hugger but when when you know depending on what kind of creature it attaches to mm -hmm. the, the xenomorph itself can change yeah but but yeah. it all starts with this that's right so uh, I'm going, I'll give it an A. All right. All right. A is good. I have a little setup down here. So we can go to the A. I'm not going to be able to tell what that is, but that's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> All Already right. done Thanksgiving turkey. That's okay. Right. The it, face hugger. Now the face hugger. Now this is a good picture of a face hugger. Yes. I mean, this thing is iconic. Um, <sighs> did you see what they did for Romulus, the viral marketing? Did you watch that? No. Yeah. They put that level of prosthetic face hugger on people mm -hmm. i think it was in new york and just had them go lay out on the streets <laughs> just lay out on the sidewalk and people would just lay there and twitch it's if, online it's if, amazing if, it's if you amazing didn't know what that was jay if you didn't know what, what that was you would have walking down the street just like covid yeah times 10 yeah Jeez. it's crazy and you know a little Jeez. fact i don't mike i don't know if i ever you you've known me for what at least two years now at least um there's something that you may not know about me. I actually breed um, toy, like like uh, tiny teacup face huggers. See here, I got one. I'll show you. If you can oh, see geez. that. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. They just be careful. Yeah, have, I know. I mean, they're, they're children really well behaved. Uh, um, they'll they'll just you know I I call them um, finger huggers, and they'll just sit there like that all day on you. Mm. Okay. I mean, you don't want to get them near your mouth, but, well, um, but you know, they stay on your finger. You're fine. All right. If you say so, um, where'd you put this guy? I'm going to put, I, 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 you know, I have, I have a soft spot for the face hugger. I, I'm going to go alien tier. I'm sorry. There's going to be a, probably a lot of alien. No. Tiers. I love, love me. The face hugger, the face no. hugger is always terrifying. It, it, that egg opens. It's super slow. This thing mm -hmm. flies out of it. And it's relentless. Yeah. And I, I, it jumps. It's, you know, it just doesn't stop coming. It's, I think it's great. It wraps its tail around your, like, neck, right? And then, like, yeah, it's just, you can't get it off. And that image, I mean, that's that's a horrifying image. Oh, it's so good. So, yeah. Love me some face huggers. Oh, <laughs> Speaking this, okay, of horrifying image. Here? Now, this what? is from a comic book. But this is a, uh, you know, a chest buster, as they're called. Yeah. Uh, busting out of the chest. And I liked this little mm. picture because it says, Scree! <laughs> of course, so. it's uh, also, you know, we get a little appearance from this guy in Spaceballs. Well, of course. Um. <laughs> Man, I haven't watched Spaceballs in a long time. Long time, yeah. But, um, you know, he's fine. I don't. I mean, I, I wouldn't say he's the uh, the most iconic part of the whole cycle you know sure yeah so but i mean he's just fine in his own right and and you're pretty much done if you see that guy so um i'll give him a b i'm gonna give a him b? a b okay yeah you're spreading just stuff in the, out in the from interest the of spacing some stuff out a little bit yeah yeah you obviously you very much are and that's that's good now we've got the drone okay classic yeah. lone hunting xenomorph whatever number they give it i don't recall Mm -hmm, mm hmm. But but it's a it's this is the monster. This is the main monster we get in Alien. Yes. And you really you can't love the franchise without loving this thing. I mean, this no. is the thing, right? This is the acid thing. blood. Is, mm hmm. Um, it's got the mouth in the mouth. The mouthception. Yes. <laughs> mouthception. Um, I love it. And I love the fact that, uh, you know, when when aliens rolled around james cameron only had like six of these to do the whole movie and and of course being who wow. he is he made it look like a lot more um but uh yeah these things are, are awesome alien tier i mean look it's the alien it's got to go in the alien mm -hmm. tier mm -hmm. well here we go get that little guy in the aliens here real quick 
Boop. <laughs> yeah, a little drum. Now, yeah, because now, as you, you said, James Cameron, but James Cameron doesn't come around until Aliens, right? Like, really, yes, Scott right. does the first film. He's the creator. Yeah. Well, is he the creator of the franchise? Or did he co-wrote mm. it, co-created it? Yeah, I, th- I think so. I think Gosh, so, right? I should probably know should've that. Should have done that research. <laughs> Didn't research. Aliens. Okay, this is one of my top three favorite movies. Fair. Of all time. Um, again, it's space horror. It's bigger in scope. Um, you know, Ripley really comes into her own here. There's so many mm-hmm. iconic scenes and, and iconic lines. Uh, it introduces the queen concept. Yep. Um, the, another thing that, that this movie does really well that sticks out to me that doesn't get talked about a lot is that the cast is large. Right. You've mm-hmm. got the whole like group of Marines and within a very short amount of time, they establish personality for most of those Marines. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's something I've always appreciated about the movie because it makes you care about each one of them when they die. Um, so, yeah, um, this this movie is fantastic. I just if this is on and I see it somehow, if I just mm-hmm. come across it, not like people flip through channels anymore, but. Um, in that situation, anytime I can get some aliens, I go for it. Alien tier for sure. I for mean, sure. probably my favorite. I mean, not probably, definitely my favorite of the franchise. No problem. Well, no, no question. And, it, and it's an action film, right? It changes it. I mean, it's still horror. It's a horror action though, but the, the energy and like, it's not as, you're not, it's not being stalked as much as the original film is. Right. Uh, right. Definitely. It's definitely different vibe yeah sure, there's more sure. action to it but yeah all right well the first thing that cameron brings into this is the warrior type which is different than the drone in the sense that the drone in the first movie hunted alone but the warrior hunted packs okay right so like we get those guys so what do you think about that that they hunt in packs <laughs> yeah i guess i mean uh, in, in you general know, it's 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 interesting and yeah, it makes them more, it, it definitely qualifies them more as like a, like a hive species mm-hmm, because you mm-hmm. also get the queen. Yeah. Um, and it kind of makes you just think like, Oh, if there had been more aliens in the first film, they probably would have done the same thing. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, alien tier, they're awesome. I mm-hmm. mean, yes, <laughs> fill it up. In this one, we also get the queen. Which is yes. badass motherfucker. Oh, yeah. I mean, the scene between, you know, Ripley with the flamethrower and oh, yeah. facing down the queen. And there's like, n- there obviously no dialogue, right? But mm. there's so much being communicated with just the action of pointing the flamethrower at the eggs. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And the, I mean, kind of the queen's vengeance in a way. Um, of, of coming after them nonstop because <laughs> Ripley torched the eggs. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, again, sorry. I mean, if this is boring, but aliens no. here, I, this, this is expected. Look at well, we're at the peak. We're, mm-hmm. we're going to slide down the slope a little. Well, now we're getting to alien three. Yeah. Okay. It takes place on a prison planet. Um, so you've seen aliens, so you know in the end, uh, Newt Hicks and Ripley escape, right, mm-hmm. in the pods. Yeah. Newt and Hicks are immediately dead. Okay. In Alien 3. They just, like, their pods don't work. Whoops, they died. Yeah. Sucks. Whoops. Ripley crashes on a prison planet. Um, I believe the alien, we're back to one alien, and it, it comes out of a dog. Um, Mm -hmm. so a little bit of a different evolution. It's the one where Ripley ends up with the alien in the chest and it bursts out in the end into a vat of molten lava. It's the one she has to shave her head for. Ripley dies. Mm -hmm. Um, now, you know, and this was Fincher's first feature, right? Yes. Um, E. E. There's there's just, there's not much going for it. There's just not much going for this movie. Like, Whoa. I don't remember the characters being particularly likable. I don't 
remember much of character, good character development with Ripley. Mm -hmm. Um, It just, it just does. I don't think it does much for many people to be honest. Sure. Well, it does give us a few extra things. It gives us the Royal face hugger. Okay. Which is the, the face hugger that specifically comes from a queen's egg or something like that. I believe. Does it add anything? Like, what, what's, what, what do you feel about this? Why does that need to be a thing, I guess? I don't know. Uh, okay. D. The creature itself, you know, fine. Okay. Mm-hmm. The movie, mm, probably okay. didn't use that face hugger as well All as right. it could have. Now, you mentioned this earlier. What about the runner? The runner. Uh, you know, part dog, xenomorph. Yeah. I'm going to go D for dog. <laughs> it's fine. Like... <laughs> No, no, don't really feel too strongly about it. Yeah, that's fair. D for dog. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we're moving right along because that brings us to Alien Resurrection. Okay. Directed by Amelie. Yes, Jean-Pierre Jeunet. I love him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love Amelie, City of Lost Children. Delicatessen. Uh, Delicatessen, a very long engagement. Love his stuff, yes. Mm -hmm. And I was very excited to hear that he was directing this before it came out. Yep. Um, so this is the movie that I feel like I have a hot take for because this movie gets somewhat panned Okay. and I think this movie's fantastic. I really, really enjoy this movie. I think it does not get enough credit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it brings together a great crew with collaborators. The directors worked with before, and I'm going to, butcher his name but dominique pignon is that his name it sounds good um, and ron perlman who pl- who plays a- again <laughs> i i always enjoy i don't know why but i i enjoy a good sort of jerk jerky character that redeems himself by the end of the movie mm-hmm. and that's what he, ron perlman's character is in in the film and of course ripley comes back in The only way that I think actually kind of works, which was to cross her DNA with the xenomorph. And so now she has, she's a little bit more super Ripley. Mm -hmm. Um, But man, I don't know. I think it works. I I really enjoyed it. She's immune to the acid blood. She has it herself. Mm -hmm. Um, And even, oh, you even get Brad Dourif in this one. I don't know. I just really enjoyed it. It's very different, but I I'm giving it an A, guys. An a? Like All if right. you haven't checked it out, I think it's a worthy sequel. I do. I I really think it's cool. And and again, not enough credit. All right, AVP baby. The movie. Ugh, okay. The, the world wanted. The comic books gave it to us beforehand. I think. And then, yeah, I don't know. You didn't need to cast Lance Henriksen in it. it. It's just weird and distracting. It's in Antarctica. It just, I'm going to drop it down to the E. Like, it just, it did not do, like, so much hype, so much potential. After years, you, you could have just done the comic. Well, it did give us one thing. It gave us a great storyline like we love in Battlestar Galactica. With specifically someone named Scar, a, pre- a predator named Scar, and an alien named Grid. Who has a bunch of scars on him, too? I don't remember him, and I'm going to give him an F. I'm sorry, it's just because I don't remember him, and that it therefore it left no mark upon my memory. Well, don't worry. You don't have to remember much more, because now we're at Alien vs. Predator <laughs> Requiem. Yeah, th- this one, no. Uh, let's just get, let's just F. Let's just go away. It's Pop it bad. down to F. It's, it's bad. bad. But Jay, it did give us something. It gave us the Predalien. Okay, I'll be a little forgiving to the Predalien because it it does like track in terms of like being it it should work, you know, within the within the rules of the. Universe, you know, I don't have anything in C. 
<laughs> I give the Predalien a C. It, it's something that's probably deserved a better movie. Speaking of better movies, we have Prometheus. Oh, man. See, I told you there was going to be a slide. <laughs> <sighs> Saw this in the theater. Walked out with my friends trying to justify it. Yeah. <laughs> like, you didn't expect to come out going, that really wasn't very good. Like, it had to have been good. And and it, it's like, well, but but what about this? What about that? This is the one where, like, Charlize is running in a straight line and the big wheel is rolling toward her. And all she would have had to do to survive was run to the left or right. And she didn't. Um, and, you know, they had the engineers because they wanted to explain the whole space jockey thing. Yeah. And then it got into, like, what? Like, seeding life on Earth. And then, like, we got to track down the origin of all life. Oh, no. It's sort of like you've gone too far with the trying to answer the mystery. Yeah. You know, they're way more terrifying when you don't know where they come from. We are going to go E. E? All right. Yeah. That's where the mo- that's where the movies tend to go except for that Requiem motherfucker. And Prometheus really it gave us the black goo which becomes important later, I think. Yeah. Um you know, there's moments in Prometheus, but but it does give us a Deacon at the very end, if I recall. Oh yeah, that little guy. Very, I think, completely CGI creature. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. This picture doesn't give it any non-CGI looks to it. There, you've got a mark against it because it's pure CG. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna keep it at E. Yeah. Like, what did this thing really do that other things haven't done better? You know. Not even a D for Deacon. Not even, you get a D for Dog for the runner, but don't worry, Jay. Ridley Scott was like, you know what, they all hated my Prometheus movie, so why don't we do Alien Covenant? It's more like an alien movie. It's part of the main franchise. It is. I remember that one being weird because there's a few characters that never even leave the ship in the film. Mm. They attempt and then they just die yeah we're a little bit back to the exploration right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you know kind of wander it's wandering around in in the dark and trying to figure out things um d i mean it's better than prometheus from what i recall but like again i don't think we're covering much new ground yeah it, it didn't leave a lasting impact unfortunately because with all of these i always hope that they're going to be amazing well alien covenant did give us a new sort of a new life cycle a new take on a full life cycle and it starts out with these necromorphic egg sac okay which you know blast out some stuff and that that mm-hmm. you know whatever does right. something infects their victim um, what do you think about these little blueberries <laughs> I'm I'm fine with the blueberries. I, I do like, you know, when, when there's uh, an unknown creature and, you know, what can this thing do? We don't know. Um, ah, I'll give it a B for blueberries. All right. It is nice. Yeah, you're right. Because you're like, wait, that's similar to the xenomorph uh, eggs. But like... A little different. Give me a mystery. Give me the mystery. Okay. Up next, Jason, is the next part of that like cycle, which is the blood burster. This this oh, this is the guy that comes out of the back where it just like rips itself out. It's a really gross scene. <laughs> where, where are you getting the names for these things? Are you are you making them up? No, I'm getting them off of the uh, Zenopedia. Oh, okay. This is the Bloodburster. I, yeah, I guess unless I typed it wrong. He's a little guy. He's um, a little, little guy. Look at him. I'll go for I'll go a B for the bloodburster. You know, I mean the creatures are fine. It's it's like if the story doesn't work, that's the real problem. Yeah, I agree. Then after the bloodburster, Jay, I just it's this motherfucker. This guy. <laughs> the neomorph. Pretty creepy looking. The exact opposite, right? One of the hard things about finding images I found in this is a lot of them are really dark because these movies are dark movies. You know? Yeah, visually yeah. dark, and so it's all shadows. So like this guy though. He's just this pale white motherfucker. You know, this is maybe what the uh, the thing in Resurrection should have looked a little more like. At least from this picture. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
that makes a little more sense to me and probably would have made that thing a little scarier and a little less dopey looking. Sure. Um, B, I can get into that guy. <laughs> All right. That's what let him get into you. Well, right, right. And avoid the blueberries. And then we've got the Pratomorph. The Pratomorph. This is just like one of the other aliens, but CG, I feel like. <laughs> Probably. He's getting a C. Okay. Because that's CG all the way. And yeah, get you get out of here, you dingus. <laughs> CG. And th- there were, I realized there were a couple other omissions here uh, with within this certain section. Uh, there was the, in Prometheus, there's like the trilobite thing. There's a couple other monsters. See, this is the problem with this, is that, is that you know, I mean, I really love those handful of movies you know, that I have up in the, um, up in the, the xenomorph tier, but it's like, then you just get these other ones where they're like not good. And I'm not going to go revisit them a lot just because I'm a fan of parts of the franchise. So it becomes easy to forget pieces of this because they're not worth revisiting. It's weird because this franchise, I do feel like has like some of the highest highs and the lowest lows, the peaks and the valleys, of like any franchise I can think of. When it's good, it's amazing, and when it's not, it's terrible. Yeah. Before we jump into Romulus, and don't worry, we will. Uh, I wanted okay. to to uh, make sure you knew about a little little play that happened back in 2019. Wow. Uh, a high school production in New Jersey made a. Uh, there you are. There you are. Made <laughs> yes. a live stage performance. Look at this alien. This guy's so cool looking. Yo, uh, a high school class doing a production of Alien. Automatic Xenomorph tier. The automatic Xenomorph tier, of course, will pop you up there. And then I just want to point out also that in the play... I mean, that is awesome. And it looks good, too. Yeah, right? It's brilliant. Xenomorph tier again. I'm not going to take anything away from that creativity. I think it's amazing. Okay, Jay, it's time finally for what I want to know and what everyone watching wants to know, how you rank the upcoming film Alien Romulus. Uh, Well, I I haven't seen it yet. Oh. Uh, Oh. I didn't... You know, okay, you know what? Oh. Let me just go watch it. I'll just go watch it. I'll come right back and we'll finish this. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll come back in like 15, 20... We'll knock it out. 15, 20 minutes. I'll be right back. Okay, hold on. Perfect. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. I'll be right back. Okay. Wait, what was... Did you see that? Okay. I'm back. I'm back. Welcome back. I saw the movie. That was quick. Good. Good job. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I just ran down the road. Oh, cool. Well, that's that's close. That's that's what takes the time. Okay, I'm I'm ready to talk about. Romulus. All right. Well, let's as 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 I noted at the beginning of the video, we're not going to do spoilers for Romulus because it just came out. So so what we're just if you wouldn't mind just kind of giving your feelings about Alien the or Alien Romulus, not the first movie. We already heard about that. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, please. Overall, I I thought it was excellent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought the characters were the the young characters were handled well they mm-hmm. weren't written in an obnoxious way that you sometimes see in tv and, and movies these days mm-hmm. they all had agency and um i feel like most of their decisions made sense you know of course you get some that don't because it's a movie and some people need to make bad decisions sure um but overall i was happy with the characters uh, i don't Thing I, I don't I don't think they're as memorable by and mm. large as say, aliens or maybe the first one um, the 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 fodder who's fodder and who's not is, is pretty apparent okay um, I liked the lead actress I I don't think they were trying to make her another Ripley I think she uh, kind of has her own thing mm-hmm. going on um, the android was fantastic. Cool. Um, he, I mean, he had a lot to do in the movie mm. and I just think he nailed it. He was definitely one of the, gave one of the best performances of the movie. 
the script itself, like I said, I think it was tight and mm -hmm. it, it, it's sort of like, um, cascading thing, bad events that happen. Like one bad thing happens, they have to make a choice because of that choice. Another bad thing happens. So they have to deal with it. And because of okay. that, another bad. So it's that kind of waterfall of, yeah. of events happening. Cool. That's good. Um, uh, and it starts pretty early on once they get to the, the space station. Nice. Love, um, it. Love something that starts quick. You know, we don't, if you don't have to wait, sometimes it, the slow burn's fine, but like sometimes man, when something that kicks off like 15 minutes into that movie, it's, it can be fun. Yeah. Once they get to the space station, I mean, they, they establish sort of why everybody's there and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then once they get to the station, it, it starts going pretty, pretty quick in my opinion. What about the, the you know, creatures in there? They're great. Um, the, the face huggers were scary as usual. Mm -hmm. um, you get a nice scene. You can see it in the trailer where they're sort of swarming out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of them, which I, I probably, well, I don't know. It may be the most active amount of them that you've seen at a time. Okay. I know that you've seen the, the rooms full of eggs before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But in this one, there's a lot of these things running at once. Um, they okay. do add a little bit of mythology to the face hugger. Cool. In one of the scenes, which is is nice. Um, that was welcome. The aliens themselves, they're cool. They're they're you know back to being big and mm -hmm. scary. Um, the movie does give us. There's a lot of action set pieces, you know. Yeah. And they did manage to provide an interesting, at least one, no, more than one, but at least the one I'm thinking of, um, a set piece with the aliens that I've never seen before. Okay. Which which was really neat. Everything really worked, I think. Um, some people I know have criticized it for having, you know, sort of the multiple ending mm -hmm. syndrome, but... In my opinion, it, it's sort of the movie leads you to believe things are winding down and they're not at all, <laughs> okay. at all. Um, so I, I appreciated that. I do understand why people say it is sort of like a greatest hits of the Aliens yeah. franchise. But my response to that is it takes all of the... Um, it takes bits from all of them, all the concepts, and unifies them. So I don't think it's as much relying on them just because they felt they needed to as much mm -hmm. as it took the mythology overall, tied it together, sent it in a new direction. Okay. So yeah. I appreciated that. There were a couple points that didn't need to be there. There's a mm -hmm. couple nod and winks to the audience that are no. kind of like you didn't need to do that and the movie would be just fine. Yeah. Two big ones, two big ones. I can think two, of two big fan service moments. The weird thing about the fan service thing. I don't know. Maybe it's just, it's called fan service, but a lot of the time the big fans don't like that stuff. They don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Whatever. Um, it, it doesn't ruin the movie by any means. Okay. But it's one of those things where it's like, what, what? Um, it could have easily been handled differently and, and yeah. people people wouldn't even be talking about it. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> it's like they're only talking about it because it's weirdly connected to other things. Yeah. So yeah, all the all the monsters, all the creatures are terrifying. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. which is great. Sounds like there's some mix 'em ups with some stuff and there's some classic stuff in there and oh, yeah. it sounds fun. Yeah. It sounds spooky. It, it was really fun. It was really fun. Nice. Um, if Alvarez, you know, I know this is doing very well. Yeah. And if they were to announce that there was another one happening, I would be totally into it. All right. Well, cool. Well, hopefully, hopefully something like that comes and hopefully the upcoming uh, Alien Earth by Noah Hawley is good. The series they're mm. doing. Uh, yeah. You know, but we'll just have to wait to see how that goes. I like Fargo a lot. I think he's been masterful of Fargo, so... I don't know. I'm hoping yeah, he can do I mean, a nice, true. a real nice alien version. Yeah. I'm curious because what, okay. So when I hear, when I hear earth and prequel, I'm mm -hmm. 
hesitant, but you know, we're going to, we'll give it a try and we'll see if it's how they handle it. Yeah. Hopefully it eliminates all of the alien versus predator stuff. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully it's not like what the other prequel, prequel, prequel we've had was Prometheus, which yeah. we all know how that went. So hopefully it's not yeah. doing, it. but I, I feel like he's pretty good at like, like I said, touching on what people like about things at least with my only example of Fargo is, you know, there's some stuff in there that t- touches on Cohenisms, and yeah. but isn't exactly the Cohenisms in it. They're they're nice, so we'll find out. We'll see. Yeah, but um, back to Romulus. We need to know how you feel about this. How do you rank it? You you gave the first two movies. You put them in Xenomorph tier, uh, threes mm-hmm. down in E, Alien Resurrections in A, and the rest of them are in the garbage tiers as well. So. How do you feel well, about Romulus? I think I'm... I th- it might be my f- third favorite Alien movie. Okay, okay. I, I'm not going to rate it lower than Resurrection, and I, I gave that an A, so I'm going to give Romulus an A. Romulus gets an A. Let's just shrink that yeah. down right there. I'm not Beautiful. going to Xenomorph level. You know, it's not that instant classic. Sure. But, but uh, it, it, I think... One of the nicest things I can say about it is that it belongs with mm. Alien and Aliens. Okay. It hangs. All right. So, yeah. Well, cool. I guess that's it, Jay. That's all I really needed from you after. Thanks for running out and going to see the movie and spending time before that with me discussing and ranking the movies and creatures of the Alien franchise. Well, you know what? This was fun. It's one of my favorite franchises, so... um Yes, thank you for having me on this tier list. It was a blast. <laughs> thank you for having me on the video channel that we both have together. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I'm talking like a friggin' like announcer You're at my host. friend, as opposed to, I'm supposed to talk like an announcer to you, the listener. Thank you for watching, listener. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, I and hope viewer, you agree. I guess. And if, I know some people won't agree with this. Feel yeah. free to, you know, let's, let's, let's get into it in the comments. Yeah. That's comment fine. down. What about, how do you feel about the movie? How do you feel about the creatures? You know, what did we miss? I know we missed a few. Uh, Jay pointed out a couple from some of the movies that I, I missed off of that, but it just leaves. Uh, I don't know. It's time to go. <laughs> time to go. Okay. Bye Jay. Bye, Bye viewer. Bye viewer. <laughs>